The single most powerful asset we all have is our mind. If it is trained well, it can create enormous wealth seemingly instantaneously. An untrained mind can also create extreme poverty that can crush a family for generations. In the words of Albert Einstein, education is what remains after one has forgotten what one has learned in school. Winston Churchill once said, personally, I am always ready to learn, although I do not always like being taught. Whenever you feel short or need of something, give what you want first, and it will come back in buckets. That is true for money, a smile, love or friendship. I know it is often the last thing a person may do, but it has always worked for me. I trust that the principle of prosperity is true, and I give what I want. I want money, so I give money, and it comes back in multiples. I want sales, so I help someone else sell something, so sales come to me. I want contacts, and I help someone else get contacts. Like magic, contacts come to me. I heard a saying years ago that went, God does not need to receive, but humans need to give. My rich dad would often say, poor people are more greedy than rich people. He would explain that if a person is rich, that person is providing something that other people wanted, whenever I think people aren't smiling at me, I simply began smiling and saying hello. Like magic, the next thing I know, I'm surrounded by smiling people. It is true that your world is only a mirror of you. So that's why I say, teach and you shall receive. We learn the most about ourselves when we fail, so don't be afraid of failing. Failing is part of the process of success. You can't have success without failure. The fear of being different prevents most people from seeking new ways to solve their problems. A doctor, wanting more money to better provide for his family, raises his fees. By raising his fees, it makes health care more expensive for everyone. It hurts the poor people the most, so they have worse health than those with money. Because the doctors raise their fees, the attorneys raise their fees. Because the attorneys' fees have gone up, school teachers want to raise, which raises our taxes, and on and on and on. Soon there will be such a horrifying gap between the rich and the poor that chaos will break out and another great civilization will collapse. History proves that great civilizations collapse when the gap between the haves and have-nots is too great. Great opportunities are not seen with your eyes. They are seen with your mind. Most people never get wealthy simply because they are not trained financially to recognize opportunities right in front of them. When I ask the classes I teach, how many of you can cook a better hamburger than McDonald's? Almost all the students raise their hands. I then ask, so if most of you can cook a better hamburger, how come McDonald's makes more money than you? To spend your life living in fear, never exploring your dreams is cruel. To work hard for money, thinking that it will buy you things that will make you happy is also cruel. To wake up in the middle of the night terrified about paying bills is a horrible way to live. To live a life dictated by the size of a paycheck is not really living a life. Thinking that a job makes you secure is lying to yourself. That's cruel, and that's a trap I want you to avoid. 
A reason or a purpose is a combination of wants and don't wants. The main reason that over 90% of the American public struggles financially is because they play not to lose. They don't play to win. If your financial intelligence is low, money will run all over you. It will be smarter than you. If money is smarter than you, you will work for it all your life. To be the master of money, you need to be smarter than it, then money will do as it is told. It will obey you. Instead of being a slave to it, you will be the master of it. That is financial intelligence. Most people never win because they're more afraid of losing. If you work for money, you give the power to your employer. If money works for you, you keep the power and control it. Most of the time, life does not talk to you. It just sort of pushes you around. Sometimes you win and sometimes you learn. Remember that anything important can't really be learned in the classroom. It must be learned by taking action, making mistakes, and then correcting them. That's when wisdom sets in. Land was wealth 300 years ago. So the person who owned the land owned the wealth. Then, it was factories and production, and America rose to dominance. The industrialist owned the wealth. Today, it is information, and the person who has the most timely information owns the wealth. Financial struggle is often directly the result of people working all their lives for someone else. More money will often not solve the problem. In fact, it may compound the problem. Money often makes obvious our tragic human flaws, putting a spotlight on what we don't know. That is why, all too often, a person who comes into a sudden windfall of cash, let's say an inheritance, a pay raise, or lottery winnings, soon returns to the same financial mess, if not worse, than the mess they were in before. Once government got a taste of money, the appetite grew. Being able to know when to make quick decisions is an important skill. Only fools expect everything to go the way they want. Expecting. Rich people acquire assets. The poor and the middle class acquire liabilities that they think are assets. It's not the smart that get ahead, but the bold. 